she's innocent. What are you talking about? She signed a confession. That's because she's suffering from Korsakoff syndrome. Korsakoff what? It's a neurological disorder characterized by enterograde amnesia, extreme susceptibility to suggestion, and confabulation. I tell her she has a cat named Millie. She remembers having a cat named Millie. You tell her she bashed her husband over the head with a golf trophy, and she remembers that. Only there is no cat. I made that up, just like you made up a story about a murder plot to collect life insurance, which is a bit of a cliche, isn't it, Detective? And welcome back to The Kiosk Presents. And you know we love talking to our celebrity friends. And today we've got a very special guest. He's an Emmy Award winning actor that you probably remember as Will Truman for eight seasons of Will and Grace. Now he's on Broadway, but he's actually now in a TNT brand new show, very exciting, called Perception, Mondays at 10 p.m. Welcome to The Kiosk Presents, Eric McCormick. Thank you, Brian. Nice to talk to Buffalo. You know, I grew up in Toronto, so uh, so uh, Buffalo, Niagara Falls, it's uh, very near and dear to my heart. Oh, very good. Yes, and there, we love taking day trips up to Toronto. And uh, did you get down to the Niagara Falls and Buffalo area much uh, during your youth? We did. My father, we used to uh, go to Grand Island, New York, you mm -hmm. know, where, where Fantasy Island was. We oh, yeah. We go there at least twice a year, probably, say, at the holiday in there. We went to Niagara Falls a lot of times. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, all our news in Toronto, all our American news came through uh, through Buffalo. Oh sure, you had the the, the blazing uh, blazing uh, fire busters with their wine stein, right? <laughs> exactly right. I think <laughs> I think I knew how to think. My, the first words out of my mouth as a child were Tonawanda and you know. Ah, very good. Then, well, you, so you're always welcome if you ever come back to the area. You know, anchor bar, some chicken wings, do it up. <laughs> Thank you. I look forward to it. <laughs> so, Eric, please tell us about Perception, your new show on on Mondays on TNT. I'm really excited about it. Um, uh, it's it's a, a mystery show. There's definitely crimes to be solved, but they're being solved by this fantastic character that I play, Dr. Daniel Pierce, who is first and foremost an academic. He's a neuroscience professor at a college, but his uh, ex-student comes back. Uh, she's now with the FBI and lures him into help solve crimes, which would be great. He'd be just a perfect expert if it weren't for the fact that he was also suffering from paranoid schizophrenia. Oh, my. So... It's, uh, he can deal with that in the classroom, but when he gets out there in the world into a crime scene, into the FBI headquarters, it's not his milieu. And so he, he is, I think somebody described it this week as a, another in a series of defective detectives. He's, uh, <laughs> but his no. Achilles heel is also the thing that sometimes helps him solve the crime in a way that nobody else can. Well, sure. I, I would imagine now, does he have ep episodes of uh, psychosis and things like that, right? You know, in, during... Yeah, and it's something we take, it's not a gimmick, it's something we mm -hmm. take very seriously. Um, uh, it's, it's something he lives with. But because he is a neuroscience professor, because he, is, he knows more about the brain than anybody in the room, uh, I, and he's not on his meds, I, I've compared it to a, like a fireman who, who goes to schools and tells kids, have smoke detectors, and then he goes home and he doesn't have them. It's like he's mm -hmm. not practicing what he preaches. And it, that's what leads to some of the episodes that happen in the course, not just episodes of the show, but episodes within the episode. Mm -hmm. Hallucinations, the voices he hears, the things going on in his brain sometimes are, are the key to, uh, to cracking open a... Wow. Well, that, now, that really, it sounds very fascinating and very original. I can't even think of a show that's even tried to go that direction. Well, I, I appreciate that. Like, uh, like I say, I don't think the condition has, uh, has really been shown. I think it's important to see someone... Yeah, unfortunately, when it comes to paranoid schizophrenia, we have, you know, the, the scary examples, the people that have lost their, their homes or their livelihoods. There's a lot of high-functioning uh, people uh, living with paranoid schizophrenia, and mm -hmm. we get to show that. We used to sh get to show not just him, but this, we'll see several others in the course of the, uh, of the series. So I hope right. it's a condition that we, we tackle properly. And I understand you're actually more than just the actor. You're the co-producer of this show, so that probably lends a little more uh, uh, responsibility and maybe a little more... Uh, you know, just personal personal drive to see this succeed. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think it's it's crucial as an actor to to get your hands dirty and and be part of it. I I certainly did on Will and Grace, but I wasn't a producer, so they didn't have to listen to me. <laughs> they have to listen to me now. Very good, very good. Now I understand you're in New York City now. You're actually on Broadway in Gore Vidal's The Best Man uh, with James Earl Jones and Angela Lansbury. How's that going? It's been an amazing experience. It's a it's a great play. It's a political play. So this was the the perfect year to revive it. It's very mm. much about uh, two candidates vying for the presidency, and one's very, one's very Obama, the other's very Mitt. So it's very timely, and I'm, I'm the Mitt. I've been very much this uh, very conservative candidate throughout for the last four months, which has been uh, an interesting 
thing for a Democrat, but it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing cast. John Larroquette and Candace Bergen as well. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's wow. been absolutely amazing. And, and do you enjoy just hanging out in New York City in the summer? Do you have personal time where you can get around and just do some things or go to some nice restaurants? I love New York City. Uh, New York City's fantastic, but you mentioned the summertime. I think I like it better in spring. It's, it's starting to get so I'm not going to complain about the heat to the rest of the country because this is uh, this is unbelievable what's going on. Yeah, it get, right gets now. a little gets a little soggy between the big buildings, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, New York's <laughs> actually cool compared to a lot of the states right now, so I'm not complaining. But right. It is it is a hot it's a hot place. And let's summer. talk about movies. You've got two movies that are are about to come out, right? Barricade and Knife Fight with uh, Rob Lowe. You're working with on that. Yeah, I'm hoping Knife Fight gets a, a distribution very soon because it's also a political film. I play. Yet again, a, a, a governor of, of a, a southern state, and uh, and it's I think it's a really interesting uh, little film by a, a director named Bill Guttentag, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and as for Barricade, it's it's a real uh, psychological horror film with me and two kids mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a it's basically a haunted house kind of movie. I don't know when it's coming out, but I uh, I saw a cut of it the other day, and it's it's uh, it's pretty scary. Wow. Well, between Broadway movies, television. You are an active person. I know you kind of split your time between uh, Vancouver and L.A. Now I understand, and I also know you, you sang the national anthem at the NHL All Star Game uh, not too long ago. Are, are you a hockey fan? I that's the the ironic part. This is actually going back a few years mm. ago. It was uh, almost ten, to be honest. I can't believe that. Mm. But yes, I was asked to sing both national anthems, and it's great because I had become a citizen of the U.S. in '99. So I was celebrating my dual citizenship in St. Paul, Minnesota, by, by singing both national anthems. And uh, I was, it, was, it was very exciting, uh, not because I'm a big hockey fan. It's one of the reasons I think they threw me out of Canada. <laughs> not, I'm not hockey enough. But, but that day, Peter Jennings, the late Peter Jennings, came up to me and, and said it was, uh, it was the, his favorite of either uh, song he'd ever heard. Oh, wow, that's, that's great. great. That's great and I know you've, you've, sang, uh, you've done a little recording, an Elton John song and things like that. So you, you really do enjoy doing a whole lot of different things, don't you? I do, and I'm, I'm going to take a one-man mime show on the, <laughs> on the road. Very good. So. Now, l lastly, let me just ask you, I know you're uh, very involved with some community projects, Project Angel Food and uh, the Multiple Myeloma uh, Research Foundation. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Well, um, the Project Angel Food is one that uh, my wife and I have been involved in for many years in, in Los Angeles. It, uh, it was started to, to help feed people uh, living with AIDS, HIV, in, in Los Angeles that that couldn't support themselves, and now it is developed into anyone with a, with a life-threatening illness. Mm. Um, there's an amazing kitchen uh, full of volunteers that that uh, serves. I think it's 14 or 1500 meals a day. Wow. Um, the Multiple Myeloma Foundation uh, was is, is a wonderful organization dealing with a very specific form of uh, of cancer, um, and I got involved with them a few years ago. And uh, both my parents passed away in the last six years. Of various cancers, so um, I'm trying to to honor them by being uh, you know more involved where I can with the Canadian Cancer Society and, and also. Oh, that's uh, fantastic! Well, we're so excited about tuning into uh, Perception. Uh, give us a little a little idea of what we're going to expect in those first couple of episodes. Well, you'll uh, you'll meet this this character and uh, be introduced to his relationship with what, what I call a very "don't stand so close to me" relationship with his ex student. Mm -hmm. Clearly, they have something, but their age difference and their sort of teacher student relationship gets in the way. Uh, we we see how he solves crimes, but we'll also realize that his condition is a major major factor mm -hmm. in uh, in his life. And there's some really, I think, some good surprises in. Uh, in the writing. Right. Well, it really sounds like the kind of show that people are going to just be attracted to the characters and, uh, and uh, the stories, and, and I think it's going to be really interesting. You've got a lot of fans here in Western New York, and uh, we really look forward to them checking out Perception Mondays at 10 p.m. on TNT. Eric McCormick, thanks so much for joining us on the Kiosk Thank you Presents. so much, Brian. Appreciate it.